Citizens speak out. People's demands for greater basic freedoms, improved living conditions and a more representative voice in their governments continue as they gather in countries such as Afghanistan, China, Cyprus, Egypt, Iraq, Libya, Palestine, Pakistan, Sudan, Syria, United States and Yemen. United States and Palestine. Following discussions last week in which legislators considered suspending aid to the Palestinian Authority, officials from the U.S. State Department on Tuesday testified that continued assistance is very important for stability and fostering peace with Israel. China. As part of the government's nine-month crackdown on intellectual property rights infringements, Chinese Vice Minister of Commerce Jiang Zhangwei announced on Tuesday that police have arrested more than 9,000 people suspected of piracy or counterfeiting. Cyprus. In the southern city, Ziyi, a massive explosion occurred on Monday at a naval base where munitions had been stored since being seized during illegal transport in 2009. At least 12 people died, including Cypriot Navy Chief Andreas Ioannidis, with 62 others injured, in deep regret for the tragedy, which experts had warned of due to unsafe storage of the munitions. Two top Cypriot officials, Defense Minister Kostas Papakostas and National Guard Commander Petros Chalaklidis, resigned the same day. Pakistan. As U.S. military in Pakistan used unmanned drone planes to attack the tribal areas of South and North Waziristan, a method of war that has been criticized by both the Pakistani government and citizens, an estimated 50 people were killed on Monday and Tuesday alone. Sudan. Despite UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's request that Sudan retain some 10,000 UN peacekeepers already in the country to assist as remaining issues with South Sudan are worked out, the Sudanese government decided to have them removed. Egypt. Frustrated by the lack of re-election by the government and realizing the goals of the revolution earlier this year, a number of protesters in Cairo, Alexandria and Suez have gone on hunger strikes, with at least two in Alexandria who were admitted to the hospital on Monday, July 11th. On Tuesday, tens of thousands of people answered calls for a million-man march to protest the government's slow pace of reform. In response to revolutionaries' calls for his resignation, Deputy Prime Minister Yahya El Gamal stepped down while the High Judicial Council sentenced several members of the former regime and addressed demands for greater transparency in the trial process by ordering that it be made fully accessible to the public. Iraq. Agence France Press reports that on Sunday, dozens of Iraqi farmers blocked a border crossing with Iran, preventing around 360 Iranian pilgrims from visiting religious shrines in Iraq as they protested Iran's diversion of the Al-Wind River to benefit Iranian crops at the expense of farmers downstream in Iraq. Afghanistan. Around 500 Afghans demonstrated peacefully in Jalalabad on Monday to protest the ongoing activities of the U.S. military in their country, as well as cross-border rocket attacks from Pakistan, which have caused an estimated 42 citizen deaths in the past month alone. Meanwhile, French President Nicolas Sarkozy announced on Tuesday that France is withdrawing 1,000 of its 4,000 troops from Afghanistan by the end of 2012. Libya. U.S. President Barack Obama stated Monday that the U.S. US government is ready to support Russia's offer to negotiate Libya's democratic transition as long as leader Colonel Muammar Gaddafi leaves. Also on Monday in Egypt, a court ruled that Libyan government-run TV stations should be removed from airing in the country. Meanwhile, French Prime Minister François Fillon stated Tuesday that a political situation is beginning to take shape in Libya as he reaffirmed his government's support of both the African Union and Russia's mediation efforts. Syria. On Monday, the U.S. and French governments spoke out strongly against the Syrian government after its supporters stormed their embassies in Damascus, damaging the buildings, before going on to attack the residence of U.S. Ambassador Robert Ford. Calling the incidents at the diplomatic facilities absolutely outrageous, the U.S. State Department joined the French Foreign Ministry in stating that international law was violated by the Syrian government's failure to protect the two embassies, and that Syrian officials were attempting to divert people's attention away from the real problems of deadly crackdowns in the country. Both the French and U.S. governments have made repeated calls for President Bashar al-Assad to halt citizen repression and begin reforms with U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton further stating on Monday that the Syrian president has lost legitimacy. Meanwhile, also on Monday, Syrian activists said that at least two people were killed and 20 more wounded in Homs as the Syrian army entered the city that day.
Yemen. U.S. President Barack Obama's aide for homeland security, John Brennan, traveled to Yemen on Monday to meet with the country's interim leader, Vice President Abd Rabo Mansour Hadi. There, he reiterated requests made the previous day to President Ali Abdullah Saleh, who is still recovering in a Saudi hospital, that the Yemeni government agree to a swift transition of power, including the stepping down of President Saleh. With grief for the precious lives lost and fellow humans injured and suffering, we pray that the conflicts may cease in all nations, for people everywhere to choose peaceful shared existence in dignity and freedom.